So this is Jason Aarons, and today I'm going to log into a Tanberg video conference server, VCS uh, 5, I believe this is actually 6.x, and uh, log around and take a look. Um, this is a lab gear, so it's a admin Tanberg. And what I've got here is I've got a bunch of uh, C90, C40, E20, and 150MXP endpoints uh, as part of this. The, um, the endpoints uh, you have to configure, um, you know, SIP or HTTP3 and uh, alias ID and gatekeeper IP and all that to register to the VCS. Um, so normally from a troubleshooting standpoint, I'll go to status, system, and uh, registrations. Um, I, I can go to system, look at resource usage, which is actually this page, which kind of shows me, you know, maximum number of calls, uh, make certain I'm not violating any licensing agreement. But if I do go to status, registrations, I can go by device, history, alias. Um, I did try and register a SIP droid phone to the VCS and it wouldn't register. Um, there is a list in the uh, VCS installation guide of supported endpoints. So you can't just register anything to a, a VCS. Um, most importantly in the system configuration or the VCS configuration protocols, your HTTP 3 and your SIP. Um, have to be set up properly to allow the endpoints uh, to register. Um, there is a uh, you know default uh, access list and that kind of thing to uh, to allow it. And if you go into um, SIP, your default domain has to match whatever the domain is of the device. So if it's telepresenceu.local that it's registering with, um, it has to uh, match up on the registration on the VCS. <clears throat> Um, from there, pretty much, if you have uh, multiple endpoints registering to the same VCS, um, really there's a default uh, search rule that um, gets applied that basically says, you know, anything in your own uh, local zone, search locally. If this gets deleted, you won't be able to, um, it's this one labeled 50 local zone match, any local zone. If that's not in there, you won't be able to call. And then if you have another VCS with other endpoints registered to that VCS, You'll need to create a, um, a neighbor zone and then create a search rule that includes that neighbor zone in the uh, VCS. Um, so if I want to look at calls, call history. Take a look at the call history. No active calls. If there was, I could take a look at an active call. I can also pull up uh, the endpoints. Um, say, for example, I want to pull up a. Um, an endpoint that is a, uh, a C40, um, what I would do is I would find the IP address of that registered endpoint as it shows over in the uh, registrations. And I know that my uh, C90 is uh, 182.168.50.112. I'm sorry, it's 120. And so if I want to, I can go into the, uh, the uh, Tanberg C20. <clears throat> and I can actually hit the call button and tell it that I want it to dial another endpoint. Not all endpoints have the capability to do this to where you can call from the GUI. So if I, this was a remote endpoint and I had a local um, video conferencing unit in front of me, I could actually have it dial my own uh my own unit, so I can say den201 at telepresenceu.local and when I hit dial, that unit actually goes off hook and then dials that uh, dials that unit. Um, to go into the endpoint and look at the configuration, I can click on advanced configuration. Actually I need to... <clears throat> and again I mentioned that you need to configure H223 or SIP, um, you know, going forward, mostly everything's probably going to be SIP as opposed to H323. But I need to configure an H223 alias. I do recommend that the ID be, you know, the same as your SIP uh, ID, and then E164 number, call setup, gatekeeper, and whether using authentication H239 with the um, H323. And if I go down to uh, SIP. I've got a SIP profile, 
and then same thing I've got that sit profile so that's kind of looking at a at an endpoint um, so in the VCS I've got uh, different things under status uh, bandwidth links and pipes uh, some presence uh, any kind of warnings that the red exclamation mark in the top might be under system Ethernet, IP, QoS, DSCP markings, change the login page if you want to, SNMP, logging, external manager. Under VCS, I got protocols, SIP, configuration domains, registration, the allow list. Again, this is very important that you, know, you either put in the IPs of the units you want to allow or you allow all. And then uh, under uh, VCS calls, local zone, default zone search rules again you gotta be able to search your own local zone and then other zones that you want bandwidth configuration clustering you can put two VCS's in a cluster transforms allows you to do um, modifications of dialed numbers so if someone dials uh, den 401 you can always add at uh, telepresenceu.local on the end of it um, so uh, you can kind of four digit dial within a site and then you know long distance you can transform call policy the CPL is an XML markup language that allows you to um, create uh, rules for uh, for dialing. And then advanced media gateway. I'm not familiar with what the advanced media gateway is. And then under applications, conference factory. Um, that's where you actually uh, can set up uh, ad hoc conferences and the ability to dial into um, a VCS and an MCU and uh, create an ad hoc conference presence that's going to be used with the Mobi client OCS relay find me and then under maintenance upgrade um, to upgrade a VCS um, there is a uh, flash uh, drive on the front so you can use the flash FTP um, or uh, I forget there's three ways to upgrade a VCS flash uh, what not to download the configuration of the VCS you have to use win SCP it is an SCP backup um, server certificates login accounts by default when you add users they're going to become a member of the site administrators group backup and restore on the VCS again is using win SCP <coughs> there are option keys in the uh, Oh, actually, I may be thinking that WinSCP is for the TMS. I'll have to go back and look at that. And then restart, reboot, shutdown. So let's let's pull up the uh, TMS, the Tamburg Management Suite. It is forward slash TMS. And I believe this one's going to be ECA 34. Okay, so let's go another way. The TMS is running on Windows Server 2003. Version 13 allows uh, allows you to run Server 2008, 32, and 64-bit. 
So it's administrator Cisco. Let me just go back. So this is the Tamburg Management Suite version 12x, version 13 I mentioned just came out. This does run on Windows Server 2000, gives you a little bit of idea of system usage. And you can monitor or manage multiple VCSs with the TMS. So if you wanted to book new conferences, create conference templates, or uh, go into advanced conferencing to um, require an MCU usage. So advanced conference uh, always except point to point. You can actually modify require it to use an MCU. So you want to schedule new conferences, add who the participants are, monitor conferences in use. It'll pull up some graphical views of uh, conferences. So again, this is the telepresence management suite. And then lastly, what I want to cover is the Codian MCU. It is actually when you do a point-to-point -point video call, the two units can uh, call each other. Uh, some units, uh, like the C90 series, can do a multi-point call where they can have up to three people uh, with a built-in bridge on the uh, C90. However, um, once you get a, uh, above a certain number, um, or if you don't have the multi-point option key on the C90 or the C-series uh, endpoints, um, you would definitely need the Codian uh, MCU. So this is the Tanberg Codian MCU that I'm logging into. This is what will uh, you know, allow you to have multi-point uh, calls. Um, so you can go into the Codian MCU, take a look at the status, check CPU usage, diagnostic information, view conferences. The health, security. 15 warnings. It's the default system in the lab, so I don't have anything set up. The IP address of the MCU, the DNS, the gatekeeper. Um, obviously, your MCU is going to register with your VCS or your video conferencing system. Um, that way, uh, devices can use it. It also has an auto attendant uh, in it. It's answering on uh, what ports, SIP, 5060. Your uh, TMS uses SNMP to talk to the endpoints as well as the MCU. Gatekeeper usage, your gatekeeper IP address. This is the VCS. Your VCS is a gatekeeper SIP proxy. All your endpoints register to the VCS. It is the center of the universe, and the multiple VCSs get managed by the TMS. Registered. Now I've got two VCS units, 30, uh, .40 and .45. There are in a cluster. The cluster you always manage from the publisher. 
and uh, any changes made on one of the subscribers uh, will get overwritten. You always want to configure NTP on the uh, VCS and on your endpoints. Nine completed conferences and see all the information about a completed conference. You can modify the layouts with conference templates. You know, what's it going to look like on the screen, depending on how big of a monitor they have. And then you can send a message, I guess, to all conference participants if you wanted to. So if anyone dials, uh, our service prefix is 8. So they dial 8-2003, they would probably get this uh, endpoint is what I'm thinking. In case you want the uh, MCU to dial out to add people of an H-233 gateway, it could send calls directly in and out of a gateway. And again, here's our gatekeeper. Oh, so Cody and MCU could be a gatekeeper, but it's not recommended that the MCU be a gatekeeper. The Codian MCU should register with the VCS and let the VCS be the gatekeeper. And again, that's pretty much it for the Codian MCU and then an overview of the uh, endpoints.